I can definitely say that I'm not one of those mathematically gifted autistic people. I am not either. And this brings up another big thing I talk about. And I got a new book coming out called Visual Thinking. Mm -hmm. And um, it's about the different kinds of thinking. I'm an object visualizer. Yes. If you watch the HBO movie about me, Temple Grandin, it shows how I think visually. Mm -hmm. And I'm an extreme object visualizer. I can't do math. Uh, higher math. So that makes me good at, at, at art, animals, photography, mechanics. Mm -hmm. Then you got your mathematical person that's got autism, your mathematical mind, your computer programmers, chemists, physicists, they often are good at music. And then you have the word-based person who's on the spectrum, who um, lo loves facts about different things. You know, yeah. history is often a yeah. favorite subject. And I uh, no, I made the mistake when I originally wrote Thinking in Pictures back uh, over 20 years ago of thinking everybody on the spectrum thought in pictures the way I did. That's wrong. Yes. It's a it's a subgroup that thinks in pictures. And then and then there's a then there's a group that's the more the mathematical pattern thinkers mm -hmm. and then they're word thinkers. That's really interesting. What what kind of. um <laughs> what kind of category would you would you put me in because i um most most of the stuff that i do is... i don't know enough about you That's, um that is true <laughs> it, it tends to um the visual thinkers like me um, i know a lot of them in real high-end skilled trades sure. you know i've worked with large companies on installing cattle handling facilities and i worked with brilliant people that were laying out entire plants um, people that were inventing equipment and patenting it, that'd be my kind of mind. And some yes. of these people were on the autism spectrum, undiagnosed. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the computer people working for the tech companies. Uh, the first thing I'd ask you is, what were your best subjects in school? It's where I'd start <laughs> trying to figure out what kind of thinker you are. Uh, um, it was philosophy, um, okay. physical education, uh, chemistry, biology and physics. Okay. Now philosophy is definitely verbal. Chemistry has got a lot of math in it. Physical education, that could be, could be anybody. Um, a visual thinkers like me can't do algebra. And I'm sure. very, very concerned that my kind of mind is getting screened out of a lot of things. Hmm. Um, because real higher abstract math, I can't do, but there's things that I can do that I'm very good at. <laughs> That the mathematicians are not able mm. to do. Yeah, it's it seems to be a, a really big problem nowadays. Uh, even even for um, other neurodiverse people like um, ADHD or uh, dyspraxia or, or you know a whole, a whole host of different people, they seem to like the the education system seems to be very uh, rigid in their approach. Well, it's to, very uh, verbal oriented. Yeah. Um, because I worked with people that were designing entire big beef plants mm -hmm. and other things. I'm going to estimate about 20% of the people that I've worked with that can build anything were either autistic, dyslexic, or ADHD. And the problem is um, industry needs them. Mm -hmm. I uh, talked to a lady yesterday, uh, just a couple of days ago, Gerber Baby Food Factory, and they have problems of finding people to fix equipment. Yeah. We've got the same problem in the meat industry right now. The people I work with have all re are retiring. Uh, Nobody's replacing them uh, because they took all the skilled trades things out of the schools in some of our states. Some of our states are putting it back in. And skilled trades aren't for everybody. Sure. But how do you know if you don't try things? Mm -hmm. And Oft often there's like a, a really big barrier to entry that's quite theoretical and exam. Well, you see, on the things I did with cattle handling, um, there was no academic barrier to entry in that. Sure, yeah. Uh, it's considered industrial process equipment. Mm -hmm. And if they make an academic barrier to entry on industrial process equipment, I don't care what industry you're in, you're going to be in big trouble. Sure. Because they, visual thinker like me is the one that invents mechanically complicated equipment. Yes. In fact, if you want a poultry processing plant right now in the U.S., you're going to import all the equipment from the Netherlands, from Holland. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. They did not take out the skilled traits. That's why that equipment now, and it's mechanically clever equipment, comes from Holland. 
That's really interesting. Is because Ho- Holland has quite a um, um, like their 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 structure seems very different to any any of the countries that I've that I've been to. Do you think there's anything particular about the Netherlands that is or, or Holland is is particular? Like, well, why they produce such such good machines? Well, right now, um, the, the Hollands, you know, um, I went to two just before COVID hit. I went to two state of the art brand new pork processing plants. Most of the equipment there came from Holland. You see, there's like two parts of engineering. There's the mathematical part because you sure. look at a food processing plant, and I've been in tons of them. The mathematicians design the boilers, the refrigeration power and water requirements, make sure the building doesn't fall down. But then all of the equipment that goes inside the plant, mechanically clever equipment, not Mm -hmm. made by the mathematically inclined engineers. And this is something that educators just don't uh, realize. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look back at old patents in my new book on visual thinking, which you can pre-order right now on amazon.com in the U.S., just put visual thinking and then my name, Temple Grandin. It's a very good book. um, You go back in history of the patent office uh, in the U.S., they originally required that you submit a scale working model of your invention. Wow. Now, that's not the mathematical kind of minds. Most of the early patents were coming out of the people that were probably non-mathematicians. I mean, think back to things like uh, printing press, uh, and that was too Mm -hmm. early to even be patented. But mechanically clever equipment. And uh, <coughs> we've, we've got a problem right now on people to fix factories. You yes. can't find them. I can tell you where they're at. They're playing video games, <laughs> autism label, when they ought to be fixing factories, <laughs> all types of factories. That's, re- that's really interesting. Um, <laughs> I, um, you know, I, I've, I've done a lot of, um, I mean, a lot of the, the work sort of advocacy in the workplace work that I've done tends to be around um, things related to the media in- industry because I know a couple of um, autistic people who um, like work for the BBC or do like their own independent um, related media stuff and um, one, of, one of the big issues that I've really found is that there's a lot of push for diversity in the workplace but yeah they, we're getting that we have that too but they, they don't tend to um, focus a lot on the inclusion aspects like the the positive reasonable adjustments so that it can get the most out of each person what i'm finding in the workplace and i've been doing a lot of workplace talks is it seems like the financial sector they can really use the mathematical type of um, autistic Mm -hmm. um and a computer sector uh, they know they need that talent yeah now you get into what i'm going to call services and consumer products and i'm not going to mention any names uh, in that situation, I it's uh, sort of more, uh, you know, they're just talking about it, yeah, rather than actually <clears throat> doing something about it. And then you get the very creative sector. Yeah, I um, I visited Pixar one time. I uh, I you can definitely see the visual thinking there, just in how the offices are decorated between sure. a company like Pixar, and then you go into a, strictly a computer company, computer guys. Oh, they might put a few geometric patterns on the wall. <laughs> but you go into Pixar, they've ripped out all the office cubicles, and one person has the Tiki Hut, and the next one has the Star Trek <laughs> cubicle. No, I'm no not way. kidding. Is, is that how no, it's... Really, and it, it, it's... You see, those are the more my kind of mind. Yeah, yeah. You know, the visual creativity. Yeah. Um, But the thing is, we businesses need these different kinds of minds. And when I talk to corporations, they say, what's the first thing we have to do? The first thing is you have to realize different minds exist. Sure. And there's scientific research, and I've outlined it in this book, The Autistic Brain, to show that my kind of brain, the object visualizer, is different than the pattern mathematical thinker. There's scientific research that backs that up, and they have very different skills. Mm-hmm. And and I've been involved with the livestock industry for 50 years right now. I've got a plant right now that I've uh, got a real mess with the equipment. And um, I just talked to a guy just recently who's um, pushing 70. Uh, he's going to be looking at it very, very soon to see if he can fix it. Yeah. You know, uh, for confidentiality reasons, I have to be somewhat no, vague about yeah. what it is. 